thank you everyone for coming. Almost the end of the conference here. Um, like Laura said, my name is Carissa Williams, and this is Don Wynn, and we're from San Diego State University. We're a master's student in environmental engineering, and we're going to present today about the research that we've done for our master's thesis on the topic of anaerobic co-digestion of wastewater sludge and microalgae for wastewater treatment plants. So as I'm sure we're all aware, global and U.S. energy demand are increasing. We have limited fossil fuels, and we want to reduce our greenhouse gas <coughs> emissions. California and 32 other states have set goals for electricity to come from renewable sources. In 2010, California fell short of its goal by 2.1%. For 2020, California has set a goal for 33% of its electricity to come from renewable resources, as well as to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 15%. First, I want to define some key terms that we're going to use in our presentation. Anaerobic digestion is a process used at wastewater treatment plants where bacteria eat or digest the wastewater sludge in the absence of oxygen and produce biogas. And biogas is composed of approximately 70% methane gas and 30% carbon dioxide. Both methane and carbon dioxide are major greenhouse gases, and methane can be used to heat and So, to further define wastewater sludge, I'm going to bring up a schematic of a wastewater treatment plant. So everything that goes down our sinks and toilets goes into our sewer system and comes into our wastewater treatment plant, goes through treatment processes. Um, the liquid portion is separated out as treated effluent, which contains uh, nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus, and the solid portion is termed sludge and uh, comes out and goes into the anaerobic digester, where bacteria use the sludge without oxygen to produce biogas, which is, like I mentioned, mostly methane, which can be converted to heat and power. So given our energy needs and our desire to re reduce greenhouse gases and also our wastewater um, plant system, we see some potential. Microalgae is currently being looked at as a source of renewable biofuel. However, many of the studies are focused on extracting the oil or biofuel directly from the algae, and this is an energy intensive process and therefore costly. We also notice that wastewater is underutilized as a resource. So not all wastewater treatment plants have anaerobic digesters, um, so therefore their sludge is going into a landfill. Also, some plants that have anaerobic digestion are not converting their methane to heat and power. So they're simply burning it or flaring it to prevent its emission into the atmosphere, but no heat and power is being generated. And the most common reason for this is because there's not enough methane being produced to make it economical for that plant to install the infrastructure to convert their methane to heat and power. So we want to increase their methane production, and so we propose that uh, we should add an algae reactor to our wastewater treatment plant system with anaerobic digestion, where the algae can be grown with the nutrients in the, in the treated effluent, as well as the carbon dioxide from the treatment processes and from the anaerobic digester. And in turn, the algae can be added to the anaerobic digester with the sludge to increase the amount of methane produced, and thus increase the amount of heat and power that the plant can produce. So therefore, we're creating a carbon neutral energy source at the wastewater treatment plant. So to determine if our proposal is feasible, we want to investigate the increase in methane gas production in the anaer anaerobic digestion of uh, wastewater sludge with algae. And we also want to evaluate the influence of operational parameters such as temperature, alkalinity, and the tension time. So we, cho we chose two uh, species of microalgae to test. Chlorella vulgaris, which is on the right, and Pindesa, which is on the left. And we chose these algae mainly due to their high theoretical methane yield, as well as due to the fact that they are easy to grow and they're well known and well researched, and they grow naturally at some wastewater treatment plants. So to set up our test, we used lab scale, we created lab scale anaerobic digesters, and these were 250 milliliter glass bottles that were um, sealed with ported caps with tubing and valves. So we have two tubes coming out of our sealed caps with the gas pipe, and our valves are plugging the ends of each tube. So we added our algae, our thick and waste activated sludge, our, or TWAS, and our inoculum, which is our seed bacteria, to the bottle, and then we purged them with nitrogen gas through the tubing to create an anaerobic environment free of oxygen. We then um, covered our bottles with a can koozie, uh, so, you know, the thing that you use for your beer or your soda, uh, and some electrical tape to uh, inhibit the, the light interaction with the algae. Uh, then we put our bottles into an incubator, which is all dark as well, uh, and a shaker 
which shook them at 150 rotations per minute for all of our tests. So the first thing we looked at was the proportion of twas or sludge to algae. And we um, ran the following five proportions for each of our algae separately, our chlorella and our syndesmin. And the proportions are based on weight, based on volatile solids, or VS, which is a measure of the potential methane gas potential. The potential methane gas production. Um, so this test we ran for 60 days at 35 degrees Celsius. And the reason we chose that temperature is because that's a common temperature used at wastewater treatment plants in the U.S. We then wanted to look at the effects of reduced temperature on the biogas production. So we uh, ran two tests, one at 10 degrees Celsius and one at 20 degrees Celsius, on the 50-50 proportion of algae to sludge for both the chlorella and the syndesmin. And we ran this test for 30 days. Uh, then we wanted to look at the effect of adding alkalinity in the beginning of the test to the biogas production. So we also ran this test for 30 days um, on the 50-50 proportions of both algae. Um, and we ran it at 35 degrees Celsius. And so to one set, we added 1,570 milligrams per liter of alkalinity, that's DACO3. And to a second set, we added 3,140 milligrams per liter of alkalinity. Um, and this is in addition to our control which we did not add So to um, measure our results after our bottles are in the incubator, we want to measure the volume of biogas produced as well as the chemical composition of that biogas. So we use a glass syringe, which we attach to the um, valve of one of the tubes. If you recall that um, picture of the digester with the tubing in the valve, um, we then opened up the valve and any gas that was in there had built up pressure and it would expel the plunger of the gas of the glass syringe so we could uh, measure the volume. And then we could take that sample and run it through our gas chromatography machine to measure the chemical composition. And we determined that our digesters were producing approximately 72% methane gas. All right, now I'm going to talk about our results. Um, the first test we ran was the algae proportion test. Uh, this chart shows you the volume of bile gas produced over the 60-day digestion period. Uh, each line represents a different proportion of sludge and algae. And if you look at the yellow line, this uh, top line, sludge and 0% algae, you see it comes out to the fastest start, but then by about the uh, end of the digestion period, you see all of them uh, end up being uh, pretty close in terms of their biogas production. And um, once you factor in the standard deviation, they're all really similar uh, in terms of gas production. This one is the same uh, test, but for our syndesmus algae instead, uh, follows a pretty similar trend. The purple line, which is the 100% sludge, and 0% algae uh, also comes out producing the fat gas the fastest, but then at 20 days, the 50 50 um, proportion uh, catches up to it, and by the end of the test, the 50 50 has produced the most. But again, in the first test, uh, once you factor in that standard deviation, uh, they're all pretty similar uh, for their gas production. The uh, thing to note at 20 days, that's a, about typical uh, US so wastewater treatment plant uh, anaerobic digestion time uh, retention period. So if you stop there, you're kind of losing the gas that you could get in the continued uh, digestion period. Uh, for this one, we took the results in the first two um, slides and uh, normalized it over the amount of BS, the mass of BS that was added. And you can see that the green and um, blue lines, which was the syndesmus, uh, looks like it produces more gas than the chlorella, which is the uh, purple and red line. But uh, once again, once you take into account their standard deviation, they end up being pretty similar. Looking at our temperature test results, um, if you look at the 10 degree results first, which is the uh, blue and purple line, you can see that there's a drastic drop off in the biogas production. It's about an 80% reduction from 35 degrees Celsius. And looking at 20 degrees Celsius, um, that's a less of a drastic drop, about uh, 30%. So if you try to run it at 10 degrees Celsius, um, it's pretty impractical, but it's still feasible if you do it at 20 degrees Celsius. For our alkalinity addition test, um, for our chlorella, you see that it starts out with a general trend as you increase the alkalinity, the more biogas is produced, but by the end of the digestion period, you can see that um, it doesn't follow that trend so much anymore, but all three conditions do end up being very close in terms of gas production, so, you know, less than a 10% difference. Uh, for syndesmus, um, you see that the whole digestion period does follow that trend of, as you increase the alkalinity, uh, more biogas is produced but they do end up being close at the end, and the uh, difference wasn't as great as we were expecting uh, for an alkalinity adjustment. Uh, another thing that we were interested in were uh, the coliform levels. Um, 
the farmer uh, is interested in applying this land site onto a farm as a fertilizer, um, has to meet certain EPA standards for the maximum amount of fecal coliforms in that um, digestant, which is a no more than two million colony forming units per gram of total solids. Uh, so what we did was we tested the amount of coliforms in our um, uh, digesters pre and post digestion and plotted it on this log scale chart. And you can see that with the exception of the 10 degree test, um, there's uh, at least a 90% reduction in total coliforms and at least a 98% reduction in fecal coliforms. And so that fecal coliform uh, levels um, meet the EPA standard by a pretty good margin. Another thing we're interested in was the nutrient analysis. Um, so if you're going to use the digestant as a fertilizer, you know, it should have a decent amount of um, nutrients in it to be feasible as a fertilizer. So we tested the amount of nitrogen and phosphorus in it in the cross different tests, and we compared that to a digester with just 100% sludge. And you can see that they all produce pretty comparable results to the 100% sludge test. And in the case of alkalinity, you know, exceeds it a little bit. And finally, we we're interested in the effects of growing the algae in a primary effluent. So what we did was we took some primary effluent and tested the total nitrogen and total phosphorus levels. And you see that data in the bars are left. And then we also grew either chlorella or the syndesmus in the primary effluent for two weeks. Then we filtered that out and tested the remaining effluent. You see that when you grow the chlorella, there's a, uh, about 50% decrease in the uh, total nitrogen and phosphorus levels, and even greater with the syndesmus. So uh, if you grow this algae in a uh, raw wastewater or on the primary effluent, uh, you can see that there's a good amount of um, nutrient reduction. So, um, what can we, um, to summarize up all this, um, whether you have chlorella or syndesmus growing in your, um, in your wastewater, both are good candidates. You can see that they're more similar than they were different, and both of them produce uh, bile gas um, comparable to the amount you would get if you were just growing, uh, if you were just digesting sludge. Um, that algae digestant resulted in uh, nutrient-rich uh, sludge and that had lower coliform levels, low coliform levels. And uh, if you grow your, waste, your algae at a wastewater treatment plant, um, you're not only taking carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, but you can also um, capture any uh, carbon dioxide used, uh, produced by other processes such as your methane burning, or you can even capture uh, carbon dioxide from a power plant and use that to help grow your algae. So in the end, you have a carbon neutral um, energy source. So the significance of all this is that um, you, know, you could potentially increase energy generation of wastewater treatment plants, and those are a decentralized source of energy compared to, let's say, uh, building a centralized source like a, a solar or a wind farm in the middle of the desert. Uh, it's more economical because you would have to connect that to a grid, build new transmission lines, new substations, but compared to this where the treatment plant is already hooked up to a grid, so the infrastructure cost would be uh, lower. You're also increasing the amount of renewable energy that you're generating and reducing your greenhouse gas emissions. So uh, that would also help you meet uh, state and uh, federal mandates for uh, renewable energy generation. And you're um, reducing the amount of nutrients when you're growing your algae in the wastewater. So uh, that could reduce your treatment costs and your other um, processes. And finally, uh, this technology could be um, feasibly used in developing countries because um, developing country, um, land is not at, as at much of a premium, so you could dedicate more land to uh, farming your algae, and you could also uh, increase the retention time for your anaerobic digesters and increase the bile gas yield. Uh, not to mention that you're getting fertilizer, uh, an energy source, and improving your sanitation. So this isn't the end of the line of our research. Uh, when we finished our digestion experiments, what we found was that the digestate was still green, meaning that there was still intact algae in there that wasn't being digested. So if we could find a way to pre-treat that algae to get more of it to be digested, we could produce, uh, increase our bile gas yield. So I'd like to thank the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for funding our research, the Sandy Leho uh, Joint Powers Authority for providing us with plenty of sludge and primary influence, <laughs> and our advisor, Dr. Tomezgan uh, for Roma. Uh, that's the end of our presentation. If you guys have any questions, we'll be glad to take them.